This video is part of my 1 to 99 skill guide. If you want to learn the best way of achieving max level, click the first link in the description to go to the main guide. Hello everyone, Chaos here and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, the Hallowed Sepulchre. This is the newest method of training agility which completely switches a traditional formula. This is one of the most rewarding yet challenging training methods you will find in the entire game after completing the Sins of the Father quest which opens the Dark Mayor area. The Hallowed Sepulchre is a 5 floor agility challenge, so think of it as Pyramid Plunder but for the agility skill. There are many ways to calculate experience and profit per hour, since there are chests you can loot on every floor for more profit, so it depends on what you value more money or experience. If doing this is strictly for experience and at full focus, you can see upwards of 80k experience per hour or even a modest 60 to 70k per hour if you are also focused on getting as many treasures as possible, which you should do at the beginning to obtain the various rewards at the shop to make your time there, let's say, less stressful. Now, for this guide in specific, I will switch the formula a bit. I will explain the different mechanics this place has to offer and then I will explain all of the obstacles as well as a full run as I do it life to give you more context. Just like the fight caves and the inferno for example, this is one activity that requires you to do it yourself to get the hang of it, as no amount of videos watched will truly give you an understanding of everything you need to keep track of. If you want a short guide, here it is. Do it yourself, and once you get the hang of it, you can calculate both the experience and profit per hour. But let's go to the more detailed guide. First, let's talk about what you need to enter here. For the level requirements, I recommend at least 90 to agility, 66 thieving, 56 construction, 54 prayer, and at least 7 magic moving all the way to 93 magic for the best results. For the quest requirements, you need to complete the sins of the father and all the skills and quest requirements that come with it. For the item requirements, I would say the list is too big to fit into the card, but honestly, I'm just lazy. Simply copy my inventory and my gear. Most notably, you don't really need anything, but all the items shown here serve a purpose. One thing to note is that at the beginning of your grind, I recommend bringing one Ceradomen item to use the obelisks at the end of each floor to recharge your run energy so you can avoid bringing stamina potions. First, let's talk about the items in the shop. The Hallowed Shard is a one-click teleport to the entrance of the Hallowed Sepulchre. The Hallowed Token will give you an extra minute inside the activity when you click on it. I don't recommend using this until you are getting at least to the final floor consistently and stop using it once you get to the final chest without any problems. The Hallowed Grapple has a 100% success rate when grappling across obstacles to get to the chests. The Hallowed Focus has a 100% success rate when activating the magic portals. The Hallowed Symbol will make it so that you only only need one vampire dust to cross the holy barriers. The hallowed hammer will never break any nails when making bridges with planks. And finally, the hallowed ring prevents you from taking any damage if you fail any of the obstacles and you will teleport quicker to the last checkpoint. You can buy all of these by earning hallowed marks which you can find inside of the coffins. If you want my personal suggestion, this is the order in which I would buy everything. First, a few shards, then the ring, the grapple, the focus, the symbol, the hammer, the Dark Die for your Dark Graceful set, the Dark Acorn, and any leftover marks should be spent on the recently added Hallowed Sack for more profits. Second, let's talk about the challenges for you to reach the coffins. For the Grapple Challenge, click on the pillars to grapple across a platform, loot the coffin, and then grapple back. For the Portal Challenge, you must have a Jewelry Enchanting Runes on your pouch and simply click on the portal to float across. For the Bridge Challenge, simply click on the highlighted area to build a bridge and then click again to cross it. And finally, for the Offering Challenge, sacrifice one or two Vampire Dust on the Braziers to go through a barrier to access the coffin. Third, and finally, let's talk about the Hazards. The Wizard Statues shoot fire every few ticks. In some cases, you can click one tick before the animation ends and you can make it through, but sometimes it glitches out and you will fail. For the rule of thumb, click as soon as the statues start moving when the fire is active. The warrior statues fling a sword towards the way they are looking at and will come back to them after a few ticks. Sometimes it's better to just wait for the sword to get back, but once you get the hang of it, you can make your own judgment. The three ranger statues will shoot bolts, but there is one that will not move for every cycle. Position yourself on the safe road to avoid damage. The priest statues will make thunder strike down in designated areas, and you can easily avoid these since set areas are marked on the floor. If you are struck by the lightning, you will be stunned for a few ticks. And finally, although this is not a hazard, but something that can either help or harm you, 
you have the teleporting tiles. They will start shining when they become active. The blue tiles will teleport you a few steps forward, and the yellow ones will teleport you a few tiles back. After you are teleported, you have a few ticks of invincibility, so you can plan your movement when avoiding other hazards, and sometimes you can actually avoid swords, bolts, or lightning damage. As a rule of thumb, all of the hazards appear on every floor, except for the priest, which only appears in floors 4 and 5, and the speed at which they perform their actions increases depending on which floor you are. This is at a slow speed in floors 1 and 2, medium speed in floors of 3 and 5, and fast in the final floor. Now that all the mechanics are out of the way, let's swap to the live portion of the video to explain everything we've talked about so far. Alright, welcome to the live portion of the video. The first thing we need to look at is both the equipment as well as the inventory. All of, this uh, all of these items here serve a purpose, and I will show you what they do as we go along the Sepulchre. Uh, if you want to look at some information, here we have some of my runs, 168 completion, uh, I mean runs, um, and out of those 128 have been uh, floor 5 completions, which is pretty decent. However, Jagex had to reset uh, the counters at some point because of some cheating. So this is how this is going to work. I'm going to show you... I guess I'm going to run through it explaining my general thought process and then whenever we get to the final portion where the timer is paused, I am going to tell you what you need to look forward to or what you need to plan ahead uh, so you can actually make it, I guess, a little bit uh, more consistently to the end of the floors, okay? So let's go. Wish me luck. This is my fifth attempt. Uh, I'm still kind of rusty at the sepulcher and yeah, so let's see. Alright, this first one, the mages are going to be a, I believe, three or four tick cycle. So as long as I click on this one right after the mages uh, shot their fire, then that's going to be uh, pretty much it and it's not going to damage me. Here, I think I got bad luck and I'm not going to make it, so let's go ahead and go back. And when the knight receives the statue, let's just go ahead and run. If... You know, there are going to be some points in which it's not going to be good for you to start running, as you can see. One, two, three, and run. I believe I'm going to be able to make it very nice. And that's pretty much it. So, right there, knight and the mages. So I guess it, it wasn't as bad. Okay, so that was the very first floor. And I believe that is the quickest one that you can potentially do. Go ahead and uh, start, I, I mean, uh, recharge your run energy. And there, um, I guess floors 1 and 2 don't really pose that big of a threat. Things start to heat up um, is starting at floor 3, which I'll explain in bigger detail when we get to them, okay? So far, this is just going to give you a taste of all of the things that you are going to encounter here in the Sepulchre. So you can see some lag going to happen, oh well. Again, bad luck and I'm gonna wait for the sword to come back, even though... Yeah, I don't think I could have potentially made it. Okay, so start running, very good. So this is going to be the grapple challenge, and if you want to loot that one, that's up to you. If you don't have 92 and you can't make it to the final floor, I guess looting all of the coffins that you can is going to be slightly more efficient. Okay, so we make it here, I'm just gonna wait for, for myself not to get burned, and then we go all the way to the stairs. Alright, to the second portion of the second floor. And let's see, so here we're going to have a knight sword, and if I run super quickly, I am not going to have any problem. Very good. Uh, on, the, on floors number 1 and 2, the sword is going to have the same speed as you, so as long as you are either right behind it or, like, right next to it, then it's really not going to cause you to, I guess, reset, okay? So far, floors 1 and 2, easy peasy. Alright. Floor number three. As you can see, we didn't have any uh, ranger statues in floors one and two for some reason. But that was, you know, that's actually my luck. Here, uh, they're going to start shooting. Uh, like, two um, two statues are going to shoot per cycle. And I think I'm going to get burned. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, so here, I am just going to... Oh, I could have potentially made it. Oh, well. So I'm just going to have to wait for one more cycle. One, two, three. There we go, and I think I can, like, do the entire thing. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> okay, so we wait for the knight to throw the sword. This is honestly a really, like, scrappy uh, run so far, but I guess if it gets the job done, oh well. Alright, then we go to the right. Careful. And as long as you can see the statues, you know which one is going to fire, so that's going to make it way, way better. Let's see, can I make it here? Very nice. As you can see, the mechanics of this place is that as long as you are 
off the obstacles, even if it looks like you got hit, because of how the tiles and running work, sometimes you're not going to get hit by them, so that's not bad. I'm going to do this obstacle the way I do it normally, and then I'm going to explain my thought process behind it. Okay, so go in the middle one, and then this one. Stay in the middle one, and then go right here. Go to the left one, or I guess would be the right one, and go to this spot. And then go to the middle, and then clear it. Okay, so let's see. I'll explain how I solved this one during your first attempt, okay? So let's see, if I zoom out all the way, you will see that the very first thing that you're gonna need to watch out for are the bolts and then the fire. As you can see, the ones to the left are going to shoot their fire, and then the ones to the right are going to do it. And as you can see, the, t the floor is going to show you the ones that are not safe. So let's see, now this one is not safe, right? So if you're doing this for the first time, I would recommend you go tile by tile by tile by tile, and then looking at the safe spots. And as long as you can make it here consistently, uh, you're gonna be able to make a better judgment as to where you can uh, step to make it quicker. I believe I did it in like five or six clicks, I think. Uh, it actually took way, way longer to get used to it, but as long as you do it once, I think you're gonna get the hang of it. So general tip, first look at the bolts, and then look at the fire, look at where you need to stand, and then repeat the process for you to get all the way here, okay? So, onto floor number four. Alright, as you can see, lightning is going to start in this area, and we're gonna go all the way here, no problem. If you get hit by it, which I think I'm going to, no, no problem. If you get hit by it, but there's no other obstacles, there's really not gonna be any problem. Alright, go for one teleporter, and as long as you take one, I think you're gonna be completely fine. All right, so let's see, stand here and then go to the middle, go this way, okay, then go to the left. I'm having really, really bad luck here. Go to the right, stay on the right, very good. Go to the middle, and then stay in the middle, go to the left, very good. Again, as long as you see the statues, it's going to be better. Okay, this one is important. As you can see, all of them are going to shoot at once, at some point. And then they're gonna cycle. So first the north ones, two, three, and then the ones to the south. And then I count one, two, three, and since this is a four, si uh, four tick cycle, as long as you click on the third tick, it's going to be, I guess, safe for you to run to the other safe spot, I guess. Okay, so go this one, stay to the left, stay on the left, really good luck so far. Go in the middle, stay in the middle. Go to the right, then stay on the left, stay on the left, and we did it. Okay, on to the second portion of floor number four, and I think I got the difficult variant, as you will see. Whenever you get to this place, I like to wait for the knight to throw the sword. And... let's see. Wait, and off it goes. Okay, so do this quickly. Go for one teleporter. I don't think... Yeah, there's no way to actually... Oh, fuck. I think I'm going to fail this one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go back. Let's see. Uh, can I make it? Nice. Okay, so go right over here. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Go to the left. And then here, go for one teleporter. And you're going to be safe. Go on this one. Go on the middle one. Oh, careful. Nice. Okay. So we did it no problem. And here is where I'm going to start explaining the challenges or the coffins that you need to loot, okay? Whenever I get here to the safe spot, okay? So once you get super consistent with this activity, you can start looting the chest in this one because whenever you get to the last one, you're going to have enough time to loot, I believe it's four coffins. This is the first one and it's a prayer one for which you need uh, the vampire dust. But since I'm kind of rusty, I'm not going to have enough time to go for the final one, I believe. Or if I'm good enough, I can do it. So let's see, floor 5 is both easier and more difficult at the same time. Why is it easier? Because it's going to be the same setup, I guess, every single time you make it here. And the mages, as you can see, are going to have 1, 2, and then you click, and 1, 2. So, the, so they're going to have a 2-cycle attack, I guess you want to call it. So as long as you click on the second tick after they start attacking, it's going to be... I guess, easier for you to figure out where you need to go. Here, I'm gonna go for one to... Oh, fuck. Uh, let's see, go for this one, and hopefully enough... In <laughs> nice! Okay, so as you can see, I got enough invincibility frames 
for me to, um, I guess, avoid the sword. This is the second obstacle that you want to click on once you get uh, really good at this, which is the portal frame. For me personally, I'm not gonna go for that because I just want to make it to the last chest, and as long as I do it, it's gonna have, it's gonna be no problem. <laughs> okay, so stay on the right one. I'm gonna get teleported back. Oh well, middle one, left one. Stay here. Stay on the left one. Oh fuck! I got teleported again. Middle one. Okay. God fucking damn it! Yeah, uh, this is what I mean by this kind of. Oh, middle one. Middle one. Oh, and then the right one. There we go. These ones could potentially be kind of difficult. The closer you are to the statues are going to be uh, giving you less time to react. One, two. And then one, two. And one, two. All right, as long as you get here, the lightning is really not gonna do anything to you. One, two. I'm gonna wait for the next cycle. One, two. One, two. And for the final one, one, two. All right. And then one more statue obstacle. I mean, uh, sword obstacle. I'm gonna wait. And let's go for this one. Okay. If you take at least one teleporter, you're gonna be fine. This is, uh, I'm showing you right here. Very good. Just enough time. And then we go all the way here. And this is another grapple obstacle whenever you get to the uh to this one this is going to be the third chest that you could potentially loot once you get to the fifth floor consistently so let's go to the left let's go to the right having kind of bad luck in this one very good okay middle one go all the way here stay in the middle okay go to the left and now i can see the statues which makes it way better very nice as long as you make it here with around two minutes to spare I think you're gonna be fine, okay. So let's see, middle one. I'm gonna be a little more quiet for this one, just so I can concentrate a little bit. One, two. And then go here. One, two. And I can make it all the way here, very nice. Stay in the middle. Then go to the left. Go here. Stay on the left, very good. Stay on the left, having pretty good luck so far. Go to the right. Okay, very good. Then stay here. And for this final part, let me go ahead and concentrate just a little bit more. Stay here. Middle one. One, two. Right one. One, two. Bolts are gonna stay here. One, two. Go to the middle one. And there we go. All right. I could potentially show you the, uh, I guess, this obstacle. As long as you make it here with 15 seconds to spare, you can make it to the final chest, no problem, okay? So we're gonna go for the final coffin. And, I mean, not the final coffin, but this one. <laughs> we search it for traps, and we get some cosmic runes, coins, as well as Raynar seeds. Okay, very good. And we make it all the way back. As you can see, if I looted at least one more of the chests, I think that was not really going to be uh, <laughs> enough time for me to make it all the way here. And with 22 seconds to spare, we make it to the Grand Coffin. We loot it, and what do we get? An Endurance Ring? Something better? <laughs> okay, Rune to H, and I believe some other loot, I think. Some marks. Okay, so as you can see, that's pretty much it. Once you make it here to the final uh, chest, I don't think you can make... Oh yeah, you can make it back here. Can you enter again? Yes, you can. Uh, so you can go either for this obelisk or, or this one, and as you can see, you activate it, you quick exit, and then just rinse and repeat. <laughs> okay, so I hope this was helpful. This is not my pet. <laughs> So hopefully this was helpful to you guys, and uh, yeah, since I didn't make it on my previous attempts, I don't know what to say in this part, but uh, let's go back to the, I guess, scripted part of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something, and I'll talk to you in a second. Now, even if I made it look easy, because I honestly had to do this for a long time to get the dark graceful set and most of the items here, don't underestimate this challenge, as it will get the best of you if you are not patient enough to learn and adapt to all the curveballs this course can throw at you. Anyway, once you get the hang of it and you are able to make it to the final chest consistently, you can start looking forward to the Ring of Endurance which you can only find by looting the chest at the end of floor 5. And that's pretty much it! 
I guess my longest guide to date dedicated to one of my favorite pieces of new content in a long time. Go grind and good luck with the ring. I'll see you in another video if you decide to keep watching. Best of luck and have a great day.